Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another uh, Dark Souls lore through. Um, we are back to original footage, uh, but it's still voiceover. So, hopefully I've captured everything that happened in the last episode uh, with this one, and so there's not a lot of inconsistencies here. Um, I'm just going to kindle this bonfire really quick. I tried to get this guy to come play, but he doesn't come uh, as is common with summoning in this game without the modded code that, that people have made. Um, so yeah, um, um, where we left off last time, we were trying to save, um, Big Hat Logan from the cell. I mean, he was gone in the last episode, but, uh, he should be, uh, he should be uh, there um, in this one. Uh, and also I'm clearing this out because I guess I didn't, um, when I escaped from the prison, I just went straight down uh, the stairs and got the bonfire. So actually that was great because the only thing we really lost was the encounter with Seath, the first encounter with Seath, which I actually go back up to here and so we can see him. <laughs> Um, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it, but, um, yeah, so I'm just clearing this area out, uh, for the first time. Uh, and this is the door that actually gets opened, um, like, this door, like, if you cross over here, or right here is when you go up to Seath. Um, so, the, that door is closed when you initially get in here, and then, uh, it opens up once you get imprisoned, I guess. It's kind of weird. Just the whole thing is weird for the game. Uh, so I don't clear out this area anymore because uh, we already did this the first time. And I think I realized that at this point. Um, or maybe not. <laughs> um, so yeah, I realized that Basically, there's like another level up here. Um, and yeah, these channelers are... Um, they can be annoying here. Um, so I try to get through this area as fast as possible. Alright. So... I, do, I have to get in this room first in order to kind of get all of the um, headshot to rotate the um, staircases the right way. You have to come this side first. Um, and yeah, I guess, did I do the mimic in the last one? Maybe I did. Um, well, I didn't because I do record it, but I don't know if maybe I did the first mimic here. Um, so, um, you know, there's a, if you, if you read the design works uh, on the, uh, for this game, uh, they do have some cool, um, like, what do you call it? Developer or, you know, designer sketches for the Duke's archives. And it's and it just looks so crazy and awesome and it's it's kind of a shame that what it actually turned into was just like two big rooms and you know a, a staircase that moves both staircases basically um if you haven't you should definitely take a look at the design works so um, there's a lot of real cool material in there interviews and some of the stuff i i'm I talk about in this lore through I got from that, um, from reading that, so. More twinkling here. Again, I don't know if I've mentioned this a million times, but that's from the clams. And he provides it to, uh, the 
giant blacksmith. And, um, or is this where the uh, mimic is? Nope. But yeah, so it's got, it's supposed to have a Harry Potter vibe with the moving staircases and just, uh, you know, it kind of, it kind of hits its mark, but, uh, I think there's a lot kind of lacking with this area. I mean, it's a great area. It's a great area, but what I mean is it's like, you just take a one look at that design sketch and you're just like, oh, what could have been? So, finally made our way through this area, and this is basically the moment here where we can connect up everything. I just gotta take out this channeler once and for all. But of course I miss him. Just trying to be thorough here and grab everything. Helpful message. Treasure here. Oh, strong magic shield. That's a new sorcery. Although I don't believe it's seats. Sorcery which improves upon magic shield. At Vinheim Dragon School, only magic swordsmen are, or in special orders are allowed to learn the spell which grants temporary strength to great shields. So yeah, it is a Vinheim uh, magic and isn't related to... Uh, uh, Seath directly. But this is the archives, so there would be all sorts of sorceries here. Get out of here, you channeler. Alright, so now that we've finally switched the um, stairs around to their final form, we can actually go down and uh, unlock the shortcut so we don't have to run through here anymore. And since I got the channeler's trident, even if I wanna go crazy with this playthrough, I did I don't need to come back here at all. I love how the blood pours from my head uh, there. Um, so yeah, this is the room where we uh, where we find Logan once we free him. And um, there's a couple of key items in this room here, including the last mimic. So there's the channeler's uh, outfit, which is being stored in here for some reason. Helm of the Channeler, sorcerers that serve Seath the Scaleless. The six eyes arranged in two vertical columns compensate for Seath's lack of sight, the heaviest of protective gear for sorcerers imbued with magic. So yeah, I mean, we will now learn that Seath is actually blind. And I suppose it's... Okay. Uh, even after the onset of Seath's madness, the Snatchers, as they were often called, ventured to far lands to find suitable human specimens. Um, yeah, so we learned that Seath is blind and he, he, I guess he does a lot of his stuff through his mind and stuff. Um, maybe it strengthens his sorcerer prior without blind, without having eyes or whatever. Uh, so yeah, this is the final mimic in the game. And there is also a ascended weapon in it, but of course I also get the, uh, the symbol of avarice because you get that you can get that randomly but you get it on the last um mimic you kill always and then an enchanted falchion so again there is another ascended weapon in here my theory that i was thinking about at this point is that perhaps when you put regular weapons into mimics they become ascended through the mimics and maybe that was the goal of them originally but they have like a problem with them 
But let's read the symbol of avarice. Monster head resembling a treasure chest, once an ancient god. It is said that this is the symbol of shame imposed on a long-lost clan, exiled for the sin of avarice. Wearing this slightly raises soul absorption and item discovery, but also affects its wearer with the curse of the branded. It's a lot of really interesting stuff there, but, um, yeah, um, yeah, so if you wear it, your item discovery goes up, you get more souls, but your health drains like you're poisoned. But I love it. It's also really heavy. And in here is the crystal inverter. Again, crystal, that's kind of a new thing for us. What is the crystal ember? Ember required for weapon ascension. Crystal ember created by Seath the Scaleless, handled only by giant gods blacksmiths. By the giant gods blacksmiths. Crystal weapons are brittle and cannot be repaired once broken. And yet another chest in here. And that's the giant cell key for um, Logan. We can learn about the Visakas a little bit more, too, from this. <clears throat> Key to the giant cell below the Duke Archive Tower. The giant cell once imprisoned countless maidens, but is now empty, save for a few key persons. They struggle to uphold their sanity as the horde of mistakes writhe at a fearfully close proximity. It's interesting that they say that they're mistakes, and not just a part of a crazy experimenter or something. You know, um, but those Pisakas are the the result of the maidens that that the channelers bring back, um, and I guess they would bring the channelers and put them in the cage. And once he did all the experiments on them, <laughs> they just hang out there now. But I was saying about the. Uh, the mimics. It's possible that that was that was that was an object. Uh, uh, that was an objective from Seath that he was trying to come up with a, an object um, that in, ascends weapons automatically. So you put a you put um, a weapon into a chest and then you, you wait a while and then you take it out like a grab bag and be like, oh great, this turned into a really powerful weapon. Uh, it would be really useful if that were the case. Also, he used a god to do that. Like, he... The avarice was a god or a demon, maybe, um, that used to hunt down a, a, a long-last clan. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's interesting, because it seemed, it would imply that Seath would have, you know, powers, like, way beyond his... Like, like if he can basically control gods and and pow put them into objects and stuff and manipulate them. I mean, he's dealing with some crazy stuff. I mean, and he is dealing with some crazy stuff, as we'll, as we'll definitely figure out in this um, episode, because we'll finally be able to save uh, Logan, and he'll be able to tell us what Seath's been working on. But I think it's one of the most interesting things in the game. But yeah, I'm back here. Get these uh, man serpents to get out of our way. That bonfire is still cut off from everything. Um, like it doesn't change when you get free or anything. It's just this one and the painting of Ariamis, for which you can't warp. You have to get out and travel to another bonfire. And now we gotta clear out all the Pisakas again. For like a fifth time or whatever. I think I remember this as being so much easier than I just played it on the last episode. Like, yeah, okay, I'm still.
still, I'm still getting nailed a little bit. More humanity. All right, well, let's talk to Logan, see what he's got to say. Hello again. Alas, I'm in prison once as deep as a... Huh. Shouldn't maybe not have sped through that, because I lost that dialogue. Oh, thank you very much. I'm safe. That makes twice. I must be sure to repay you. I will visit the archives. If I discover any new spells, I shall share them with you. Prepare to be impressed by the onward march of sorcery. Sorcery. Um, yeah, he uh, he's excited <laughs> to be oh, in the yeah. Regal Archives. Don't I'll head out soon. I wish to lay down my plans before I visit the other. Yeah, he's excited about finally getting to the Regal Archives. And uh, yeah, so there's a Firekeeper soul in here once again. You know, it just, I feel like there's all these different areas in the game that uh, what used to have fire keepers. Uh, although this one might be related to, uh, like, a fire keeper being captured and brought here as a maiden. As a maiden of Guinevere. Um, in fact, that I mean, there might have been more, another fire keeper in Ann Arlando that they found. Um... Just all speculation, <laughs> but it's fun to think about because <clears throat> uh, where items are placed matters. So in this game, I went on a big tirade about this game about how I'm in the Dark Souls slump. I don't remember if it's in a thing that didn't get recorded or if it is in a thing that got recorded, but. It was a it was a fun tirade to go on. How so many other games just don't. There's no rhyme or reason for anything. <laughs> I mean, not no rhyme or reason, and I don't want to like criticize you know other games because I. It, it just that this game brought it to a new height. I'd never really uh, seen it like this before. Um, you know, there's certainly congruous like games out there uh, and whatnot but it's just that um a lot of times you'll be playing through just like a an average game you know something that isn't like zelda or something big or whatever um like i think of like devil may cry a lot you know as a just a perfect example of the antithesis to dark souls and how it's just like why are these enemies here like, why this specific enemy? Why are these items here? Eh, no reason. Um, Alright, so now we're gonna check if Logan's here, and he is here. So... Uh... I think I was going to try to catch the Hello bonfire. There. I was expecting you. This place is truly magnificent. More than expected. As promised, I shall share the new sorceries with you. And the secret of Seed's immortality. So let's see if he has anything new here. Uh, I mean, spoilers, he does. Um, so now, the, uh, the crystal soul spear. So it's the soul spear, but with crystal... Crystal is becoming a big part of what we're finding here in the Duke's archives. What's with this crystal power? Um, I talk a lot during this section, so I'm not sure. Yeah, so Soul Spear is the kind of imitation of Lord Glynn's Lightning Spear uh, that I that I talked about, and that how Big Big Hat Logan probably tried to kind of recreate the lightning as a way to disprove Lord Gwyn's godliness. Not like disprove, but you know, like just as a an effort towards you know, moving things forward. Uh, but the Crystal Soul Spear is where he might have actually got it right. Because he learns something that Seath and only Seath has discovered. Sorcery boosted by the knowledge Logan acquired at the Regal Archives 
Uh, these pale magic spears, sharpened through crystallization, are on par with armaments of the ancient lords, aka the lightning spear from Gwyn to me. That's what I think. That's what I read into that. Um, so, Seath, as I say, found something truly amazing uh, related to the crystals, and now. Logan's benefiting from them. Sorcery boosted by the knowledge Logan acquired at the Regal Archives. Logan's trials were successful, and the crystal medium facilitated a stronger bond between weapon and soul. So, weapons, souls, crystals. How are these related? We're going to find out. So I buy the crystal one and then later realize I don't have the intelligence to actually use it. <laughs> but that would be nice to have. Uh, Homing's uh, crystal soul mask. Sorcery boosted by the knowledge that Logan acquired. The mysteries of souls, crystals, and the sorceries are deeply intertwined. There it is. What is the mystery of the souls and the crystals and the sorceries? Hmm. Hmm. Again. The knowledge here is limitless. I would absorb it, then share it with you. So let's we're gonna talk to him and we're gonna learn about what Seath's immortality secret is. Hopefully I get to that quick because um I don't know when to start talking or or not. Um but I'm probably talking about you know, how great what Seath did was. Um, but I'm sure I listen to Logan first before I explain my big theory. Um, so. I'm hyping it up, I guess. Hello there. You really are very intelligent. Oh, I understand. We are in the midst of a revolution. It's interesting that he says a revolution there. Um, you know, I see it a little bit differently, you know, after talking with Koth or whatever. Um, but it's interesting that he seems to be at odds with the what state of the world as it was, and that he's trying to overturn it in a sense with truth. <laughs> at least that's how I read into that. Ah. Uh. The secret of Seath's immortality. Yes. If you have fought him and were imprisoned, you must know that Seath is a true undead, different from ourselves. His wounds close promptly, and no mortal foe affects him, granting true insulation from death. His wounds close promptly, and no mortal foe affects him, granting true insulation from death. It is an effect of the primordial crystal. A sacred treasure pillaged by Seath when he turned upon the ancient dragons. So only by destroying the primordial crystal came so much as scratched his hide. And it so happened. The primordial crystal is in the inner garden of these very archives. The crystal forest. So... Yeah, I mean, so this is what separates what's going on with Seath um, from everything else that's happening in the game. Um, Seath found uh, this crystal, but I think, you know, his archives and all the sorcery stuff he's been dealing with and mastering stuff and coming up with new things and, and creating monstrosities is all related to his unlocking of the power of the primordial crystal and now he is truly undead he's truly transcended he cannot die as long as the primordial crystal is intact um and so what you know the gods were trying to do what Gwyn was trying to do, what the path of the dragon was trying to do with the dragon scales, worshipping everlasting dragons and transcending through the scales, which they thought was the source of their immortality. Um, you know, and the other covenants, you know, even Koths, you know, and stuff like this, it all is trying to get to this next 
stage and transcend and get through um, this curse, um, get back to the way it was with, when it was just the arch trees uh, and the dragons, when there was no death, there was no Nido, there was no anything. And, um, but Seath is the only one who discovered it. Um, and the crystal that is applied to all of uh, Logan's spells is the final part that um, truly ends up mastering, you know, all these spells. And they're much more powerful um, because the knowledge gained from this primordial crystal is invaluable. And Seath is the only one to find it. And so I think it, again, shows that Logan's right. Um, I mean, I guess you have to assume a number of things about other things to follow that logic. But I, I just think that there's no truth in gods. There's no truth in the, um, you know, the way of the dragon and the, the other covenants. You know, the, this is a secret that is the biggest bombshell of knowledge that... Um, has appeared in this game and is truly unlike anything that came before it. Um, so, I love it. And I don't know how long to talk until I continue on with the story because I had a field day here. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot to talk about with this. It's certainly interesting. It's certainly an interesting aspect to the whole thing. Um, I kind of um, show something too that like the primary crystal is away from Seath but it still affects him wherever he is like we go up to the tower that's where Seath resides the tomes stored in these archives are truly magnificent a great pool of knowledge the fruits of superior wisdom and an unquenchable desire for the truth. Some would say that he had an unsound fixation. But his work is a beautiful, invaluable resource. All progress demands sacrifice. And I certainly bear no activity for that wonderful scale of things. He's kind of uh, justifying, like all the horrible experiments and the people he's killed because it came to eventually knowledge um, that is useful. Don't know if I agree with that, but uh, that's Logan's opinion. I was just saying that uh, Seath, the Seath lives, lives up in that space, but when you find the crystal, you'll see he kind of rushes in. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to buy all of... Uh, Logan sorcery, so I just kill him here because I was trying to. Uh, I failed to see your design. Heavens, the folly of you. I'm too old. But I'm not sure that we get all this stuff by doing it this way. But you learn his final sorcery that he learned directly from Seath, and get uh, at least some of his uh, stuff he used. Um, but I should go back and see if there's a chest that's been added with all of his other stuff uh, in a future episode. So, White Dragon Breath. S sorcery developed by Logan during his infatuation with Seath. Emit Crystal Breath of Seath the Scaleless. Although it no longer causes curses, what madness caused Old Big Hat to appropriate this frightful power of the ancient dragons? So yeah, this is the point at which, you know, we start to see Logan kind of go mad, just the same way that, you know, Seath apparently did with, um, um, with knowledge, I guess. And, uh, it's a cool spell. I wish I could cast it. <laughs> Trin Crystallization Catalyst. So it's a catalyst with crystals on it, as that's the key. Catalyst imbued in terrifying crystal magic, used by Logan after his fixation on Seath. Makes all sorceries incredibly powerful, but demands extremely high intelligence for its wielder, and halves sorcery uses. I like that mechanic. 
like it's the strongest uh, catalyst by far. But then, like when you could use thirty uh, soul spears before, it only allows you to use fifteen with this one. It's just kind of a neat little mechanic to um, kind of balance it, I guess, in a way. But um, Gigantic hat worn by the great sorcerer Logan. It completely hid his face, which led to his nickname, Big Hat. Famously antisocial, Logan used it to block out noise and people's stares so he could focus on his own thoughts. But it does not possess any special magic powers. And I think that that's uh, the key character trait of, of Logan. Um... You know, he's antisocial and uh, wanted to block out everyone. So if you read the design works, they talk about it. They have a whole bunch of different hats that they were going with. And as soon as Miyazaki saw the one where it's like, you know, big, covers his whole face and whatever, and he's like, that one, that's the one we got to use. It's pretty awesome. So what we're doing now is we're going to run up to... Um, we're going to run up to see if the scale is this room again, which is good that we do this. Um, I was kind of doing it for a different purpose here, but because um, we don't die. Um, although I think if we did die, we would go back to the... Uh, we would go back to the prison, but I'm not sure. Um, and I don't quite realize yet that i got to go another way. Um... But, um, yeah, so I'm just trying to show that, um, uh, Seath exists up in his office, <laughs> essentially, up at the top of the tower, uh, which is not where the primordial crystal is. I'm actually not sure what I'm doing. Maybe I'm just confused. Um, but uh, I need to go down, not up. Okay, now I'm just where I was a second ago. Maybe I'm talking about something, <laughs> and I just got distracted. Um, yeah, I'm on the right level here to go down. Um... So I'm going to go back up to uh, Seath's uh, place and step in and out of the uh, of the room again. And so I think I've said that five times. I apologize. I think there was like a streamer going uh, the night I recorded this because uh, there was just... And there was, I got invaded. Oh, do I get invaded in this one? Yeah, I think I get invaded right here, actually. Um, but, uh, and I keep getting people were, um, kindling the bonfire. Uh, so I kept getting Estuses. Yeah. I'm invaded. Um... Which makes sense, you know. I'm in a, uh, I'm in a popular area, and as a human, so I decide that uh, T S Owl Pro. I decided that I'm going to uh, help the guy out <laughs> and not, you know, hide up there or anything. 
Um, and you can see him just zip away in the bottom there. Our connections are not that good uh, with each other, so it, it's probably mine. I don't have great ping with the setup I'm on right here because I'm actually like sending all of my data through a wireless signal to get to another modem in this room. So you can see he just kind of goes whatever. So uh, yeah, I make easy work of him, but not like, I don't know. I don't feel good about that one, but um, he did give me a lot of souls. And I think he uh, invades me a second time Wow, it's like, I don't even remember this. I mean, this couldn't have happened too long ago, but he invades a second time and I have no idea the outcome. Because I don't think it was that glitchy again. We might have had just a fair fight, I don't know. So anyway, um, here we go into uh, Seath's boss room. but I don't think I stay for too long, so we can't really take a look at anything. But yeah, there he is. And you can get back out. So I just wanted to make sure he was still there, because uh, when we go to the Crystal Forest, um, I couldn't remember how he like arrives there, but we, we see a cutscene that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. So now we're headed down into, um, into the forest and we're going to do a few things out there. Um, Namely, save Siegland. Yeah, I'm glad that we didn't lose any of this. That one episode that we did lose was very minor. There was not a ton of stuff going on. Um, oh yeah, I'm just repairing everything. Because I feel like the crystal guys like do more durability off of your... Um, weapon or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just trying to summon someone for the fun of it. But, uh, then I kind of walk around here a little bit just to wait for a new one to appear. Um, but I don't really get any luck, so. Yeah, there's a bunch of guys just standing there. Um,. Yeah, the, the last episode was not very event-filled, I guess. I mean... Yeah, I was just checking to see if the chest was showing up here. Oh, and I do quit. Okay. So, yeah, I guess uh, I lost. Yeah, I should have... You know, the only way to get all of the rest of his stuff is by... Um letting him go hollow and fighting him then and then coming back here but I you know I didn't want to spend like hundreds of thousands of souls on all those so we got most of what we want from it so now here's an interesting uh, item here there's a uh, the cache of prism stones and there's a uh, I think there's a purpose for that um, but I won't talk about that in a second. Oh, yeah! I remember, yeah, uh, yeah, he invades me again here, but I die <laughs> to the crystal goal, and that's why we never fought again. Um, at this point I was, uh, stating that I, uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to clear this area out 
I mean, there's no items here uh, besides like souls and stuff. There's nothing with lore on it. Uh, there is only one thing with lore. Well, I don't know why I did not get hit there. And that is what we're going to... Uh, that crystal, the golden crystal golem. Those guys' turns, I was just like making sure they weren't gonna follow me. But yeah, I guess this guy's pretty powerful, or I got distracted with the uh, TSL Pro, and I, yeah, he does hit me, and it's like one big. Yeah, makes sense. Poor guy. All he wanted to do was get revenge. He was a blue uh, phantom, so I mean, I because I've killed a, uh, I've killed a. Uh, NPCs, so I've sinned, so I'm on the book of the guilty. That's why he was coming to me, and not not like a red phantom, like an invasion. He was uh, he was a spirit of vengeance. Whenever I think it's nasty that someone put a <laughs> a uh, message at the top of that ladder, so that people do that. <laughs> that's that's nasty. But yeah, uh, there's someone in this crystal golem as well. If you look, um, yeah, I don't know that you can see it, but it looks like it could be Sigmire. But it isn't. It was you who rescued me. Why, thank you. No, there's no sound coming from me. I don't know how I ended up in that crystal. It wasn't terrible in there, but I can hardly move. I must think of some way to repay you. Yeah, there's just issues going on with this whole thing. I'll fix it for next time. You wouldn't miss him. Have you seen my father? You wouldn't miss him. A suit of armor just like mine. Yes, of course I've seen him. Thank goodness. I knew he was here somewhere. Well then. Well then, now I must find him. Thanks again, truly. Now if he'll just stay put and keep out of trouble. Thank goodness. Oh. Alright. Just losing audio, losing videos. I guess I should have realized that the audio just stopped. Like there was no walking sound anymore. So anyway, here's the crystal cave. Um, yeah, uh, in general, there's not a lot of lore here. Um, and I do die a handful of times trying to get the Moonlight Greatsword. Um, so I really have to figure out what I'm going to talk about during this time. But let's talk about the crystal caves. So... I think that, you know, it's interesting because they're, it's, I think it's out of nothing. Like, I think they just are crystals that got created during Seed's experiments, thinking, I don't know. And uh, I don't think they're growing on things, because even these things I'm standing on are uh, crystals themselves. I try my best to get these, uh, every single one of those gets lost. Um, so yeah, you, 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 you'll see that there's these invisible walkways. I'm not exactly sure the purpose of that, like what the lore reason is for, but it is interesting. Most, most of them are straight, but if you would continue past those crystal lizards, there's one that's very much not straight at all. Um, and these things drop so you can kind of see where things are, but the best way to kind of go through that area is with, um, I'm just pointing out that there's an item here that if I grab the Moonlight Butterfly gets angry, but the best way is with Prism Stones, actually, uh, so you can kind of throw them out and, and see the, uh, walkway in front of you, uh, and so that's why there was a, um, chest full of Prism Stones in that area, because someone was planning on, uh, 
um, walking through that section. Um, so yeah, this is where we come across um, the clams that Seath has, uh, which are producing purging stones and twilight crisp, uh, twilight t uh, twinkling titanite. Um, I die right immediately with this one. He gets me in a weird stun lock, and uh, I can't roll out of the way fast enough. Um, but um, yeah, I think that he abducted these from Ash Lake and brought them here. Um, subtle point about the purging stone is that I believe that they're created in um, the clams. Like, I believe that they're, um, like, they basically have, it's like a, how a pearl is actually made. Um, the, uh, they eat, uh, you know, skulls, bones, things, whatever, and then they kind of, like, you know, let them sit in them for a while, and like a pearl, they create, like, a purging stone that, you know, as we read one of those, those are actual skulls, you know, encased in, like, stone or whatever. So I think that's the source of them in the world. Um, I think... Oh, that was the end of the episode. All right. Well, we'll continue next time.